the consumer doesn't see their input as coming through in a lot of these proce processes. And that's where we come in. There is a void for a consumer voice and a consumer viewpoint to be heard when considering these policies. All decisions ultimately affect the consumer as the end user of the services, but they're not really represented directly at these hearings. They've been limited, these hearings have been limited to industry players partly because of the perception of consumers as ill informed and naive. But in this information age, with a lot of information at their disposal, um, consumers are becoming well informed and opinionated and <coughs> demanding. This leads to a demand for better services, better pricing, and that's where we come in today. Um, this seems to be a first for ICASA, having a consumer voice at an ICASA hearing, and this is being made possible by my broadband. You're very welcome. Okay, my broadband is the biggest and most popular information technology website in South Africa. They provide news and information on a range of issues uh, relating to the internet, electronic communications and access thereto. They also provide a forum where users can discuss issues and make their opinions heard on a variety of issues. Just looking at the popularity of my broadband, it's ranked 27th in the country, um, so users clearly like the site, and it's quite highly ranked globally as well, 4,662. Uh, looking at the users, so you see what sort of users we're representing, uh, my broadband has close to 1 million unique visitors per month. Of these visitors, majority are between the ages of 21 and 55. With a, large, with a fair percentage of these having some sort, form of tertiary education. Just looking at the age stats of my broadband, uh, you can see that there's quite a spread um, across the different age groups, about 15% under the age of 21 and the largest um, user, or under the age of 25, and the largest user group is between the ages of 25 and 30. Also looking at the type of internet access or where they access the internet, um, a large percentage of these users access the internet from home or work via ADSL. So that's why they see themselves having a view in this matter. So my broadband sees itself as representative of the view of the consumer because directly through the participation of its users and indirectly through its editorial insights as appears on the site. Um, so that's why they're well placed to represent the consumer voice at this forum. Turning to the discussion paper itself, the My Broadband user welcomes the publication of the discussion paper on LLU and understands the importance of getting reasonable input from all parties. We applaud the authority in taking steps towards the unbundling of the local loop and express our support in this process. My broadband users generally support an open access approach as proposed by the authority, seeing this as leading to a choice among a variety of quality service offerings which is needed. Uh, the, the general consumer doesn't seem to see the effects of the ECA having been given sufficient effect. Um, this has led to a lack of a variety of service offerings and predatory, predatory pricing to the user. Competition at all layers of the network is needed and the, uh, the consumer encourages the authority to adopt a method that encourages substantive and sustainable condition, uh, competition rather than just competition in name only. The My Broadband users support the, con uh, the authority's approach of unbundling the local loop through the facilities leasing regulations insofar as these are reasonable, feasible and acceptable and lead to meaningful realization of an open access model. My broadband took the steps to create a poll for its members to determine which forms of LLU as set out in the discussion paper were preferred by its users. There was a multiple option poll and users were able to select from more than one option and the poll ran from the 30th of June until mid-September and the results of the polls are as appears in front of you now. So 90.4% of the, the voters in the poll chose full local loop unbundling as their preferred option, with um, varying percentages also selecting the other options as well. 
Users were also asked to comment on why they made the choices they did and to discuss the questions raised in the discussion paper. The responses that we had from there are borne out in these discussions and com uh, or this response reflects those comments and discussions. So while full local loop unbundling is preferred, the My Broadband user realizes that they can't expect full local loop unbundling to happen immediately and have voiced their support for a phased implementation with the, uh, with the different forms of LLU to be phased in, with, well, in set time frames to be determined by the authority. The consumer also sees it as realistic to commence with immediate bitstream access and line, stream and line sharing, but sees bitstream access alone is not sufficient in the long term, requiring full LLU to lead to competition, which will lead to greater choice and more effective solutions for the consumer. Consumers also think that naked ADSL should be considered among the LLU options, and we'll just discuss that in a bit more detail further. Um, just turning to the access line deficit recovery scheme, the consumer is aware of the cost realities of service provision and is aware that there may be a possibility to contribute to a recovery scheme. They acknowledge, that, they acknowledge that this might lead to an increased cost to the consumer, but they are of the view that this should only be applied with respect to the consideration of an efficient operator. The consumer is aware that Telcom has indicated that it submitted regulatory financial statements to the authority, indicating that there will be an access line deficit, but there needs to be a review of this, of this completely. There needs to be review by the authority and or an independent third party, and there needs to also be a consideration of the basis on which this determination of an access line deficit has been made. The consumer also wants to be fully informed of how it's been accumulated so they can understand the reasoning behind these costs. Um, there is a fear that this, the access line deficit recovery scheme will be used to recover lost revenue following the unbundling of the local loop, and the consumer does not want to be penalized for telecoms inefficiencies. So as mentioned, it's imperative that the details of the recovery scheme are communicated clearly to the consumer, and that there's a set timeline for this recovery scheme. So this will allay fears that the recovery scheme, if there is one, will continue indefinitely. Going back to naked ADSL, this is a very contentious consumer issue with consumers currently being forced to take a bundled voice line and ADSL line. They see this as depriving them of their choice and it also represents an unnecessary cost to the consumer because they don't necessarily want the voice line. Uh, this is also dealt with in the Consumer Protection Act, which prohibits the bundling of goods or services. There are certain exceptions to that, but we don't believe that Telcom adequately falls under any of those exceptions. There has been a notice served on Telcom by the National Consumer Commission, um, and Telcom has indicated that, that they will be objecting to this notice, so there are further delays in getting naked ADSL. Despite the process that's going on under the Consumer Protection Act at the moment, the consumer urges the authority to consider naked ADSL as an easy and beneficial form of local loop and bundling, and submits that it should form part of ongoing local loop and bundling discussions. Turning to tech neutrality, the consumer supports the open access approach proposed in the discussion paper which is based on a technology-neutral framework and maintains that open access should not be limited to the last mile held by, tel by telecom but should also incorporate mobile networks and other access media. So it is submitted that this should also form part of the ongoing LLU considerations. Looking at universal access and service objectives, the consumer doesn't see local loop unbundling as a hindrance to achieving, the, to achieving these objectives. Um, in Telcom's submission, it repeatedly mentions that the majority of the population don't have access to fixed line infrastructure, and LLU will delay the rollout of this infrastructure in underserved areas, increasing the digital divide between the haves and the haves not, have nots. Um, they note LLU is only benefiting a small segment of society. The consumer sees this as misguided to conflate these issues and suggests that it's duplicitous to argue that the objectives are mutually exclusive with those of the LLU process. 
They see the LLU as leading to more effective and efficient service providers who will then continue to, to adhere to these universal service and access objectives. So there are just certain additional consumer concerns that need to be raised. The continuous maintenance and upgrading of the local loop is one of these and the consumer submits that the authority needs to ensure that there are clearly defined service levels on all licensees and these service levels need to be strictly enforced. The consumer sees real and effective competition rather than competition in name only as essential for the economic growth of suppliers and which will ultimately lead to better pricing for consumers as well as lowering the barriers to entry for lower income consumers. A consideration for small and medium enterprises is the lack of service level agreements underpinning the ADSL service. Um, it's a great concern to them because it, it, they are dependent on ADSL for con connectivity as it's the only form of access that meets their requirements. So they see the unbundling of the local loop as allowing new entrants to offer those SLA-based services which will in turn stimulate economic activity. Ultimately, the consumer sees increased competition between service providers following on from the local loop and bundling as leading to greater choice which will also lead to an increased variety of value-added services and more advanced infrastructure. So my broadband and its users would like to thank the panel for its efforts in this matter and for the opportunity to present today and we look forward to engaging with the authority further in these discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Samara. That was short and sweet. Uh, we have some questions for you. Uh, Norma, would you like to start? Thank you. Um, I have uh, three questions for my broadband. The, question, the first question um, goes like this. Noting that my broadband supports um, naked ADSL, what does my broadband think of telecom's view that this is not technically feasible. Then the second question, does my broadband uh, view ICASA's approach to LLU using Chapter 8 and the facilities leasing regs as the right way to go about unbundling the loop? Do you think um, LLU will help increase the bo uh, broadband penetration in South Africa? Um, considering the client that we represent, I think it might be best to go back and get a more full response from our clients and revert to the authority. Um, just in brief, uh, facilities leasing um, does seem to be a good, form, a good way to approach this as well and that does come across in the presentation. And uh, they do see the local loop and bundling as leading to increased broadband penetration in South Africa. But I will take um, further views from the consumer and get back to the authority within 14 days in writing. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, are you aware that naked ADSL may cost more? <coughs> it could be argued that if you want naked ADSL, take your voice price plus your ADSL price, and there you go, that's the price of naked ADSL. Have you considered that discussion with with your My Broadband users, that naked ADSL, naked ADSL will cost more, might cost more, or might actually cost more. And secondly, you state that they, that your end users are very interested in full loop unbundling, yet they're consumers. They're not network builders. I don't. I didn't know that consumers cared about how they got their services. I just thought that consumers cared about the quality of the service and that they enjoyed their service. So from an end user's perspective, is there a dis difference between Bitstream and full loop unbundling? Because they're different in the network topology and access point of view, but not necessarily different from an end user's perspective if the end user gets an SLA that they're happy with. So how did your end users justify Bitstream to full loop unbundling? On your first question, I don't think that they 
have seen Naked DSL as costing more, possibly costing more than uh, the bundled lines because it seems in their opinion that um, the two lines are, can be provided separately because there's a cost for the voice line but I understand your point there and I think that should be raised with them and we'll have to see what they come back with. With regard to why they support for local loop and bundling, I think they see it as a reason or as a means to getting what they want which is better service provision and that's the reason they've supported that. Um, we also have a fair amount of technically minded people on the website and they would probably be better placed to answer why they would differentiate between the two and go for that as opposed to bitstream access with the proper service level agreement. So I will put that to them as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think on your second page of your submission, you said uh, the consumer is faced with both lack of services offering and predatory pricing. I don't understand how um, the end user will worry about predatory pricing because it's the cost, it's when a monopoly charge a price below the cost, how is going to, to be a negatively impact on the end user? The end user sees that as flowing down and ultimately affecting the pricing on their side. So that's essentially what they see there, that it affects them as the end user. Um, did your forum members have an opinion regarding whether LOU should include wireless local loop as well? Um, they've gone for the open access model. They do want to include all forms, not just telecoms, copper lines here. Would you mind asking your forum members that the open access approach through Chapter 8 that we're talking about may also include fiber networks, new, new investment fiber networks. What would your forum's views be on an open access regime to new investment? I will put that question to them and revert within 14 days. Do we have any questions from the floor? Thank you very much.